One of the difficulties in Character Animator is animating a character that has multiple legs, like my attack bug friend here. And it's uh, not difficult if I want him just to stand still and talk, and but if I want him to actually walk because he has more than two legs, the rigging is a little bit tricky. And the same goes for if you have a character with only one leg, like a Medusa snake leg body, but there's a little bit of finessing you need to do when you have an odd number of legs. So I started this guy off in Illustrator. I'm going to export him as a Photoshop file and set up my rigging there. When you export out of Illustrator, make sure that whatever option allows you to write layers, that's the one you choose. You can switch him to RGB when you're in Photoshop. Now we have the usual organization of all our layers, separating out all the elements that I want to move. This element, a sparkle on his knife, I think that would be a cool layer cycle if it were uh, welded to the corner of his knife. So what I'm gonna do is place that in a group, call it sparkle. I'm gonna transform these as I do it, and I'm gonna alter the scale. So this is free transform in Photoshop. The idea is in this cycle, it will fade in and grow with number two. Another thing that makes this guy's character design unusual is he has two torsos, and I kinda want him to bounce around like a little centipede. I want his head to bounce around, I want his midsection to bounce around, and I want his bottom section to bounce around. So that would probably be uh, three sets of breathe, and maybe a dangle on each one of these, but we'll check it out in Character Animator. Instead of writing uh, left or right legs, I'm going to define these as front and back. So that will be front, right leg, front, left leg, back, left leg, back, right leg. It doesn't matter if you are putting them in the folder or if you're taking them out of the folder and having them as individual layers. If there's nothing else in the folder, uh, it's going to be registered as a group and a layer in Character Animator, but the important thing for tagging my legs is that I make them independent. So if you have a group, something that's already in a folder, it's easy to make it independent in Character Animator. You just crown it in the rig section, but if it's its own individual layer, you're going to need to add the plus icon so it can be independent in Character Animator. One last step. I need to switch his mode to RGB. Do not merge those layers that I spent all that time organizing. And save. So there he is, attack bug. He definitely does not look like this guy over here. Let's tackle the legs first. Let's go after the front left leg. It's going to be welded onto his torso number two. I'm going to leave it auto and hinge. We'll see how that looks ultimately. Give him his knee, his ankle. And while I'm here, I'm going to apply a walk behavior to this leg. And not just this leg, but every single leg is going to get its own walk behavior. When I get to the back legs, it only makes sense for the back left leg to have the same rigging as it only makes sense for the back left leg to have similar rigging to the front right leg because they will be moving in conjunction. Add a walk behavior to this leg. The back right leg, I'm going to rig it the same as the front left leg. And for any of these walk behaviors to actually work, I need to give him a hip. As you can see when you mouse over it, it says the hip is used by behavior walk. After I've given each leg its own walk attribute, I need to give my actual character a walk cycle. So I've already done it here. I'm gonna turn it to uh, with left and right arrow keys. And without this, these legs that are all independent, each have their own walk cycle, are going to walk right off of my character. The walk cycle ultimately has to be applied to the entire character to have them move from side to side. Let's put him in a scene and see what happens. 
So we're able to get all four legs moving at the same time, but because of the character design where his feet are aiming in opposing directions, we seem to be facing a little bit of a uh, mix up here of how we want our knees to bend. One thing I haven't done at this stage is add sticks, so let's see if that corrects. I haven't added any sticks to my character yet, so let's see how much this corrects our problem and prevents some of the warping we're seeing. On this character, it actually seems to be increasing the warping. One thing I can do to help trick Character Animator into having my character's legs move in the correct directions is to swap out where the heel and the toe go and move the ankle up to a uh, sort of neutral position in between the two. So I'm doing that for both of my right legs. I also cranked down the power on the legs. It's getting closer. This back leg, of course, it has a very unusual design, but that seems to be the uh, bugabear. The weirdest one is this back right leg. Take toe bend all the way down. Lower the strength of its walk to 55%. Front left leg seems to be very limp in comparison. Strength at 55. The reason for taking the toe bend down is to draw attention away from the oddness of these toes. Of course, that's intrinsic in the particular design that I'm working with. You can see his front left leg with the toe bend turned all the way up makes his toe look like some sort of jelly. Uh, he has long flat feet and they're all gonna bend differently, so better to just take that down to zero entirely. Turning down the strength on a lot of these walk cycles has helped reduce some of the distortion, but not all of it. Uh, so what I have found works really well is actually tricking character animator by putting the knee where it thinks it needs to go. So this guy has a huge knee that's bent out this way. If I move it to where it would be on a normal bipedal character, then character animator doesn't warp this edge of the knee so much. This one, just move it around about here. Uh, this one I've already moved. As you can see, the right knee isn't actually on the character design. It's somewhere in the middle. And same with this one. Left knee is literally diagonal from the uh, hinge of the back right leg to the left ankle. And now when my character walks, he still has a little bit of a warp on his knee but it's nowhere near as prominent as it was before I moved those things around, especially in this back left leg. My main tips to you for having multiple legs is assign every leg its own walk cycle, still have a walk cycle on the entire character, keep the strength very low, and then trick character animator by placing the uh, toes in the same direction, the heels in the same direction, and placing the knee where character animator believes it should belong. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more creative tutorials, gear reviews and video art. Also check out our Patreon for weekly bonus videos and model photography sets.